Hello everyone, another episode, another video after a break. Um, for those of you that you don't know me, my name is Sofia Tsurlaki and uh, I create different videos in this YouTube channel that all relate to Islam and Muslims. Now, in today's video, I will talk a lot about um, a situation that upsets me so much. So I might be a bit uh, sharp in this video. Those of you that you have sensitive stomach, don't watch it. Uh, and it will be a video about Muslims and for Muslims. Now, I guess non-Muslims will watch it too, but you're welcome. So yeah, let's talk about freedom of speech and let's talk about uh, your right, some Muslims, to define what we, the rest of Muslims, can watch and cannot watch and, and can know and cannot know and why. So long story short, and it will not be short, it will be long, this video. It's all about uh, a movie that was launched um, earlier, I think earlier this year or late 2021. The movie is The Lady of Heaven. And I was looking forward to watch the movie and then June the movie came to the UK in the UK cinemas and then guess what? A group of Muslims, they protested. And some of them, they communicated with some uh, uh, cinemas. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly uh, about the details of communication. And some others threatened other cinemas. And guess what? The movie was not screened in the UK. And you know what? I had enough of that. I had enough of that. And I will give the context and I will go into details that someone that doesn't have a full knowledge of the British or the UK Muslims might not know. But you know what? Chill, brothers and sisters out there, chill. Okay? Let's start taking things with order. So the movie, for those of you that you don't know, I haven't watched it. Of course I haven't watched it because I didn't have the freedom to watch it. I didn't have the right to watch it. Someone took away my right to consume a product according to my desire. Okay? Hmm? Yeah, because theoretically those brothers and those sisters, they need to babysit us, the rest of us. Anyway, so the movie is all about, um, so it's today's Iraq. As we know, Iraq is, is under war and you know that there's poverty and there was war and stuff like that. So somehow the movie relates uh, the story of an orphaned boy with uh, uh, Lady Fatma, which was uh, the daughter of Prophet um, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And majority of us, not all of us, but majority of us, we know what has happened. So for those of you that you are not Muslims or you don't know uh, because you only learned your mama's uh, Islam. So after the death of the Prophet, there was this uh, power struggle among the people that they were the, his closest uh, companions. Now, some of them, they believed that um, the authority in Islam should be in the hands of the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, which is... Fatma, her husband Ali, which was also cousin of the Prophet, and their uh, descendants. Other people had different opinions. That's how we have the schism between Sunnis and Shia. I will not go into detail. This video is not about teaching you theological, you know, or, or, or political differences of the schism or the sects. They are both sects. For your information, for those of you that you don't know me, you haven't watched uh, my videos before, I am a convert in Islam. I am not Sunni. I am not Shia. I keep distance from all these divisions and counter divisions. Uh, let's go back to the movie. So yeah, this is the point of the movie. That's, that's the point of the movie. So we will see, or we were supposed to see, the story of Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, but we were not lucky enough because we are in Britain. Now in America, the movie I'm not quite sure whether it was screened in the cinemas, but right now it's in Netflix, people can watch it. Uh, in France, it's being uh, launched, uh, has been launched recently, so French people will watch it. But apparently American Muslims and French Muslims, they were not as good Muslims as, as the UK Muslims that they took offense. Uh, okay, 
So the whole idea, the whole um, argument against the movie from those few, few Muslims in the UK that decided that this movie is unacceptable is that, oh, it depicts the prophet. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. And you know what? They didn't watch the movie. No, they didn't watch the, They don't know whether the prophet is being depicted or not. No. It's just that, you know, there is this sensitivity in, 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 in Muslims. <sighs> Yarab, Yarab. So, you know, the name of the prophet, peace be upon him, has become, has been weaponized by those close-minded Muslims to sparkle fires and sparkle controversy and fights and, and everywhere. So, oh, they offend our prophet. Well, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You offend the prophet. Hmm? You offend the prophet by your actions and by mistreating other Muslims. Like, for example, the Shiites. <laughs> yes, the Shiites. <laughs> because, of course, those that they objected the movie are Sunnis. Mm -hmm. I told you at the beginning that this will be an emotionally charged video, and it is because I had enough with that. So let me tell you how uh, 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 this story is being repeated again and again here in the UK. To begin with, majority of Muslims in the UK are South Asian Muslims. That is Pakistani, uh, Bengali or Bangladeshi and, and Indian Muslims. These are the majority. And this goes back to the, uh, you know, <sighs> British Empire and, and India being part of British Empire. Uh, back then we didn't have Pakistan and Bangladesh, blah, blah, blah. That, that's history. I will not teach you history today. Go and learn some history if you don't know. But this is the majority. Contrary to that, majority of, of, of Muslims in America, for example, they are Arabs. Hmm. Why is it important to know that the, the British Muslims, vast majority, are, 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 are South Asians? Because there is an internal struggle, sectarian struggle, that majority of people, they don't know, between uh, the Sunni uh, South Asian Muslims and the Ahmadiyya. Ahmadiyya used to be millions in, in I think, Pakistan. Pakistan, yeah. Uh, nowadays, do you know how many have they left uh, to exist? 400,000. And guess why? Not because they converted, of course. No. Um, so there is this uh, 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 intrinsic and, and, and internal struggle, hmm? sectarian struggle. Another element that we need to take into consideration, and it's something that is not being spoken enough, is that uh, Pakistani uh, Islam, or Islam as being experienced in Pakistan, this is the correct thing, or, or South Asia in general, is heavily influenced the last years, uh, the last decades, by uh, the Wahhabi Islam of Saudi Arabia. And again, he, here one needs to know, history needs to know how the deculturation of, of Pakistan uh, uh, is taking place, and how many Pakistanis they travel to work as, as, as laborers in, in um, Saudi Arabia. But anyway, again, we will not go into that. But I want you to understand the mindset. So these are not all the Muslims. We, the rest of Muslims, have no problem to be exposed to material that, you know, uh, does not uh, sanctify uh, Sunni Islam. South Asian Muslims do. South Asian Muslims believe that only Sunni Islam is the correct uh, Islam. Actually, it's not even the correct. Uh, whomever is not Sunni is not Muslim. Th that's the idea of Salafi, Wahhabi Islam, which is, you know, has influenced uh, Pakistani um, Islam. Majority of, 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 of Imams here in the UK, they come from Pakistan. Anyway, and one Imam, in this struggle there was one Imam. I will not mention details because... Uh, but this one specific uh, imam uh, was working, uh, was appointed uh, in the government to work uh, against Islamophobia. And of course, the government dismissed him quickly because he was launching the campaign against the screening of the movie. And alhamdulillah, I mean, this is the correct reaction from the government. But anyway, I will not talk about that uh, any further. Um, so there is this long lasting hatred, and I say that on your face of, of Sunnis against Shiites. And I have experienced that for years. I, I strongly remember the first time that I realized that there is something that is called Shia Islam. 
I was not a convert back then, I was searching about Islam, I was learning about Islam. My Sunni friends, they were like, oh, these are not Muslims. I was like, oh, oh, oh why? Why? Why are they not Muslims? Uh, later on, I realized that they are Muslims. People are Muslims. I mean, theologically, there is no difference between Sunnis and Shias. It's all about uh, uh, um, political authority, uh, political struggle and authority. History has, uh, I mean, right now with the Lady of Heavens, I'm, I'm, I'm very upset because it affected me personally. I, I want to watch this movie. I want to watch this movie. And, and also because uh, it's, it's, it's history repeating itself. Those of you that you don't know, in the 80s, uh, there was this huge uh, issue that has remained in history as the Rushti affair. Long story short, a book that a, a South Asian um, uh, person, male person, uh, wrote. Uh, the name is Rushti. The, the author was Rushti. Salman Rushti. Um, and then the UK, the British Muslims, took it in heart and they were creating demonstrations. Uh, they were burning the book in public. Uh, it was the first time it was the first time that British Muslims created a, a, a panic to the rest of the population because they came across as very aggressive and very... And, and, and the non-Muslims were like, whoa, we don't want that in our country. So let me tell you some details about... and, and parallelism, okay. So I, I studied, I, I, I came across this case, the Rushdie Affairs, uh, as, as a master's student and I also I have published um, a paper about that. Uh, you can find it in my Academia uh, account, so if you go Academia Sofia Tsutlaki, you will see uh, the title of my paper is um, The Challenge of Freedom of Speech for Muslims in the UK with reference to the Rushdie Affair. Because we have the same thing, I mean, whatever happens now with the movie is again uh, freedom of speech, freedom of ex expression, right? So what happened back then in the 1980s? 99.9999% of the Muslims that they, they took the streets and they were uh, breaking, uh, you know, windows and they were burning the book and they were screaming in public. They didn't read the book. They didn't read the book. Some imams came and I think it was Khomeini as well in Iran that uh, to, uh, created a fatwa to, for Rushti to be killed and Rushti had to be, uh, you know, um, protected by the police. A big mess, a big mess, for a book that if you read it, because I read it. I mean, Mr. Rushdie, if you are watching this movie, this, this video, I'm, I'm, I don't want to offend you. But, but, but artistically and, and the book was nothing special. It was below average. When it comes to the messages, to the artistic value, it's below average. Below average. If anything, these protests made Rushdie famous and made the book famous and we still buy copies, there are still copies being sold because now this has, has, has remained in history. In academia we studied, in, in, in the universities we studied and we teach it. As an example of how freedom of speech is being violated by Muslims, okay? So your Grandfathers, and now I'm talking to those of you that you opposed the movie and you made the conversations, you had the conversations with the cinemas and you protested outside cinemas. Your fathers and your uncles and some of your mothers and some of your aunties were doing the same thing with the book. Do you know what happened? Rushdie became very, 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 very rich. The book became very, 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 very famous. Is there, I mean, the, the, the argument back then was that uh, one of the characters was the prophet. None of the characters is the prophet. None of the characters. I mean, if you as a reader, you want to interpret it as such, then you create it. But none of the characters. I mean, you, when reading the book, you cannot say, ah, oh, this is the prophet. No. Uh, so, yeah, that's what did you do. And, and you... I don't care the f of the fact that you made uh, uh, an average or below average book famous. I don't care about that. I don't care about the fact that you made Rushdie famous and perhaps rich. I hope that the man is rich. Um, no, I don't care. What I care is that you disgraced the rest of the Muslims. Those that they did read the book before they start screaming in the streets. Those that they were absolutely fine, that they trusted Allah. Huh? They trusted Allah. Because you didn't. If you see something and your personal ego is being touched so badly that you run in the streets and you create a havoc in the name of protecting your religion, the religion doesn't need your protection. 
Alhamdulillah, we are billions in the, in the world right now. The Prophet doesn't need your protection at all, at all. God does not need your protection. So chill. Don't try to boost your ego and, and you know, feel that you are something special, that you are a good Muslim because you stopped whatever was offensive. It was offensive to you, to your sensitivities, to your ego, to your fragile uh, religiosity. Not to the religion. And the same happens today. And this is that what that, that I can't I can't comprehend. I can't because of these people, 1980s, okay? They were first generation migrants from South um, Asia, majority. But now we have second and third generation man. The same? The same thing? The same thing? The argument is, oh, the movie depicts uh, the prophet. No, the prophet, the, the movie does not depict the prophet. Do you know what the movie does? Huh? It reveals what really happened to the family of the prophet. And whether, and, and you know, this is, this is something that Sunnis don't want to be mentioned. And in general, Muslims, if you travel in Muslim-majority countries, you will see that Muslims are trained to hide their shit under the, 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 the carpet, you know, the dirt under the carpet. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. We talk only about the good things. We don't talk about the bad things. That's what the Sunnis, majority, not all of, not all of the Sunnis, not all of the Sunnis, but what the majority, and of course the Salafis, Salafis and Wahhabis, Allah, what they don't want, they don't want the facts to be out there. They don't want the truth to be out there because Shias have been persecuted and have been killed. And I mean that. The latest example of, of uh, sectarian killing here in the UK happened in 2016 that someone, I will not use names, out of respect for the victim's family and out of, pff, for the killer. Um, so yeah, a man went to a shop and killed the shopkeeper because the shopkeeper was Ahmadi, yeah? Shia, and 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 the killer was Sunni, and he felt the, the killer felt that he had to kill the other human. The Quran says that uh, if you take one life, it's like if you kill the entire humanity. So the killer went against the principles of the Quran, whatever God has told us, uh, because he felt offended. Oh, really? So Shias have been persecuted, and 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 practically uh, uh, muted and, and killed and suffer, they, 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 they have suffered for centuries by the Sunnis, but this was in the Muslim majority countries. And, and someone who was not, I mean like me, I had no idea about Islam. When I was trying to learn about Islam, nobody told me about the Shias until I came across a Shia person and I couldn't understand what, what they were t telling me about and what, what was the story. And when I asked the Sunnis, they denied it. And then when I went into Sira history, I was like, okay, that happened. It did happen. But it's all about, oh, keep it quiet. Because a movie is a movie, okay? Muslims will watch it. Non-Muslims will watch it. Converts will watch it. And everyone will know that the respectful forefathers, Salaf Salah, hmm? that's how comes the Salafism. Oh, respectful? Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, they, they, they had elements to respect, but uh, they were not perfect. They were not perfect. So it's not about uh, the prophet being depicted and that being a horrible thing to happen. No, it's about, oh, we know what those that we adore have done. We know it's not a good thing. We know it will show the truth that we're very uncomfortable with. So the best uh, way is to stop it. But you shouldn't be doing that. And one, from one hand, I'm very upset because uh, the whole idea is that you don't want the wrongdoings of those that you adore to be revealed because then you will have to answer questions and you don't want that, and you have no answers about that. But at the same time, you give a bad name to every single Muslim, because right now, non-Muslims, what they know here in the UK is that, oh, Muslims protested, no people. Those that protested were a minority. The rest of us, we wanted to watch the movie. <laughs> so you talk on my behalf in the name of our shared religion, and the other fact is that, oh, you wanted to protect me from watching the movie? 
Who told you I need your protection? Who appointed you my protector? Who appointed you better than me in judgment? Now, the good news is that we don't live in the 1980s anymore. We have the internet. So the movie will be out. If I have to pay double price to go and watch it online, I will pay double the price. So the movie makers will make money, perhaps more than what they would do if the screening was coming in, in the UK. You did create a havoc. This will remain in history as, you know, another Rushdie affair. Uh, so practically you advertise the movie and it's about time that the rest of us, the rest of the Muslims, we start talk, huh? Enough with the fear, enough with the, oh, it's not good to talk about the Ummah. We are not a, 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 a uniform thing, the Ummah. We have so many differences between us. And those of you that disagree with others, it's absolutely healthy to talk about this disagreement. What is not healthy is to go into a person's uh, shop or into a person's property or into a person's house and kill. No, this is not acceptable. But talking is acceptable. Holding each other accountable is acceptable. It is about time to start talking. Because if you don't talk, those that they do whatever they do, they give a bad name to our religion and to us. So this is all about uh, this movie. At this point, I will talk about another uh, 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 show. It's a show, uh, Miss Marvel, that is is uh, a Marvel uh, series about a young girl that she's a superhero, blah, blah, blah. And again, um, I watched it only because of the reactions, because, you know, social media. So the reactions were like, oh, she is Ismaili or something like that because of the way she prays. And I was like, okay, let's watch it. I mean, artistically, it didn't impress me. Now, I'm not quite sure whether <laughs> this series is for people of my age to impress me. But do you know what I discovered? Mm. I discovered that the series vividly depicts the wrongdoings within the Muslim communities, especially towards women. So there is a scene where the two, the, you know, the, there is a prayer in the mosque and the girls are the, the, the ladies, the women, are isolated. And then uh, Miss Marvel says, hey, it would be much better if we could see your face, Mr. Imam. And then he responds like, oh, it's good uh, to hear your voice, but not in the mosque. So the voice of the women in the mosque, mm, haram. And also there is this uh, um, element of a, a female young woman uh, trying to campaign to be a member of, of the uh, council in a mosque. And of course, she's being met with, what are you talking about? You're a woman, you cannot. Because the members of the mosque council are elderly males. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a brilliant series. But it does talk about... The, the things that all female Muslims for years and years and years we dislike and we try to make a point out and we're being hushed or sushed. Uh, and this has happened to me. I remember vividly I went into a Turkish uh, 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 mosque here in the UK. And then, uh, of course, the imam was from Turkey. His English were uh, very broken. <laughs> um, and, when, uh, and he was very happy to see me and very happy and sister and all sister because, you know, we converts, we are like, oh, welcome, until we open our mouth, that is. So when I asked, uh, why you don't have a, why do females can't pray together, why you, uh, he looked at me, the idea that why women should, because the, the part of uh, where women should pray was a tiny corridor, and I was like, why, 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 why don't you have women into you know, the praying hall. Um, his, his, he just looked at me like if I was a snake or something and he turned his back and he moved away. Another incident that happened very recently uh, in, uh, where was that? I think it was in Indonesia. Mm, I'm not quite sure. Or India, India. So it was an online uh, lecture, an online uh, conference where it was all male, the panel was all male. 
So I joined from London and you know at the beginning everyone sees uh, someone from London they're like oh honorable lady welcome we're so happy to have you and then I was like oh yeah thank you very much but uh, I have a question why there is no woman in the panel and the person who organized the, um, the event was like oh there will be women watching from different parts of the world I said no 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 I was not talking about uh, women who will watch the event I'm talking about women participating in the event he totally it's like if I didn't talk he says and now we will uh, have our honorable uh, president of such and such to make the introduction and I was like D -d -d you didn't I didn't have voice I mean when I said good morning and you saw London you were so happy and you heard my voice but when I questioned uh, you know the position of women um, it's a struggle for us women it's a struggle uh, uh, for you know, it's not only us women. It's it's minorities. The Shias are a minority. Those that created the the Lady of Heavens are a minority, and they are about to be shushed. We women, we are a minority, and we are about to be shushed by whom? By those males that they have authority, either as imams or as uh, I don't know. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Those of you that you watch my videos, you know me and you know my ideas and what I'm trying to talk about. I don't lose my courage and Alhamdulillah I have strong stomach. But sometimes I'm like, why, why, why people are so disappointing? Anyway, I feel much better now that I talked about that. Um, yeah, uh, the next time that your uncles or fathers or brothers or cousins will try to hype you up to go into the streets and shush something because we don't talk about our own doings. Huh? Think about that twice. We live in an era that you can't mute people, you can't shush. And you can't prevent people who want to have access to knowledge to have access to knowledge. Even if we don't watch the movie, the whole controversy will make many search about the division between Sunnis and Shias. And inshallah, 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 and maybe this is God's, I mean, maybe God makes these minority Muslims, these few Muslims, to bark and shout so that the rest of the world will be aware. And yeah, what I dream is that we will live in an era, maybe not in my lifetime, where we will not have these sectarian divisions anymore. We'll be like, you know what, this was in the past, this was, the, the you know, the, the forefathers did that. But I don't identify like that. We don't have this sectarian division anymore. Perhaps. God, God works in mysterious ways. Anyway, I'm very upset. Stop doing that. Stop giving bad name to my religion on my behalf. Stop trying to babysit me uh, and protect me from whatever you believe that touches your sensitivities, your sensitivities alone. And those of you that you're not Muslims, we're not the same shit. Uh, pardon my, my French. Uh, no, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. So, I don't, even, 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 and this will so sound uh, heretic, but yeah, well, I'm, 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 an, I'm, an, I'm a strong opinionated, strongly opinionated uh, female uh, Muslims. Uh, brothers and sisters out there uh, have called me many names. Um, but when I see such actions, and then those Muslims, they call me sister, my first reaction in my brain is like, nah, we're not related, man. We are not. No, we're, we're not the same thing. We're not. Anyway, that's all. Uh, I hope we will watch the movie at some point, through some way. And enough. Those of you that you, you search for this, uh, you know, one hour hype and to feel that you did something super fantastic and you want to brag to your pals, stop it. What you do is not honorable. You protect nobody. You just give a bad name to everyone. Don't do it. That's all. I shall see you in the next video.